Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Wisteria Rose and I am the independent author of my debut novel, Mythomania, which is a new adult romantic suspense novel, as well as my upcoming novel, Intro Laconic, which comes out September 22nd, 2020. Pre-order is now live for this book, as well as the giveaway I have planned for those who pre-order, so links to both of those and the synopsis and everything will be down below in the description box. So today I'm coming with you guys with a different type of video than I usually do. I am actually going to try my best to give you some writing tips just based on how I generally come up with stories and what my creative process is. I've had some people ask me this question before, like how do you come up with stories or you know, how do you plot? Do you, are you a, a pantser or a planter or whatever? And um, along that terminology, I am a planter. For me personally, it is best if I have kind of a general idea of where I want the story to go without any hard details because that feels too restricting to me creatively. So usually what I like to do is I'll come up with an, with an idea from a prompt sometimes or maybe I'll have a dream or... Um, see some other media that gives me an inspiration to like take something and put my own twist on it. I do that one very frequently. If I have a TV show that I really liked or another book that I read and there was an aspect of it that I thought would be really cool in a different context, I'll go ahead and kind of write that down in my list of story ideas. So I like to keep a go an ongoing list of just really quick, maybe a paragraph, maybe a few sentences of story ideas that I have on my phone so whenever I'm on the go and I come up with one I can put it down with the rest. So on that list I think I have about 20 something different book ideas and some of them will probably never go nowhere but some of them I will want to turn into books in the future. But I've also gotten ideas from like conversations I've had with my friends or just interesting images or even music. Music is a really big inspiration for me. So those are generally starting points where I will find the very vague idea. Like, let me give you an example. With Mytho, I had read a, another story that was significantly less yonder age than Mytho, where basically there was a celebrity and he had stumbled across a girl's, like, he had met this girl randomly and then kind of like started to like her and stuff. It was very much like, playing and not not playing the story was very well written but I mean it wasn't toxic <laughs> like uh the dynamic initially is in mytho and so I was like what if we took this idea and made it you know more severe what if we made the celebrity someone who was almost a stalker or is a stalker what what if we made the girl not just a random stranger but like a big fan what if we made this like a huge global thing instead of like a secret so that's where my inspiration for mytho was born and um, in case you didn't know, Mythomania was originally fan fiction for BTS. I actually like to keep my shirt. I have a BT21 shirt on today. Very cute. Um, but I saw a bigger potential in the story to be something more than just I was posting for fun and for friends. So I really pushed towards making that my first published book. And I, if you have something like that that you've written in the past that you'd like the idea of and you can just use a little tweaking or reworking to turn into something that you could publish. I definitely suggest looking into that, though I know looking at your old work. Thankfully, I decided I wanted to publish Mytho before I was even done with it. But there's some other stories I have that I was like, oh, this could be interesting. And they're just like so, my writing has improved so much since then. So they're kind of hard to read. But that's also a good place to start um, if you're out of ideas to revamp something else. So. Once you have your idea, what next? Um, I personally like to just sit for a moment and think about what I want from this story. Like, let me see a prompt idea that I have. It's kind of vague. Mm. Let's Okay, I'll do something really basic. Let's say you want to write a Cinderella type story where there's like one person who's poor and the other one who's rich and they meet for whatever reasons, you know. 
So what do you want to get out of writing that story? Do you want to switch the gender roles? Do you want to push a certain theme or a certain message? Do you want it to be light and funny or do you want it to be dark and ominous? So thinking about what type of book or a short story or whatever it is you're writing that you want your prompt or your idea to turn into is incredibly helpful for planning the rest of the story. So if you know that right away, it can help you steer your direction, steer your plot in a direction that makes sense towards your goal. So if you decide, oh, I want the Cinderella story to be like dark and I want there to be like corruption in the palace or whatever, you probably want to stick away from putting like too many super light and fluffy scenes and then just dropping a super heavy one, you know, out of nowhere. So having an idea can really help you kind of put your roots into your story and just know where you're going even if you don't have a specific like a happens and then b happens and then c happens you know so once you kind of have decided that what i personally like to do is just go outside sit down on a nice sunny day play some music and just write whatever thoughts i have about the story down this is before like my actual plot points just whatever interesting things like oh if I know I absolutely want to include a scene where there's like a dragon fight or oh I absolutely want to include a scene where someone jumps off of a building or something so just little tiny tidbits like that that you can write down and so you don't forget them so you know kind of some interesting things you want to have inside of your story now for some people Um, that's enough they can just have their little collection of ideas and run with it some people just run with it entirely and that used to be me but I realized I was having a big consistency issue if I didn't take notes down and have a general idea of where I wanted my story to go like colors colors characters would change hair color or height or you know like age and stuff and that can be really it can really pull your reader out of the story So it's best to at least write down, you know, character facts like that. But after I have my kind of blurb of, oh, I want this and this and this in the story, sometimes I will also write down what I specifically do not want to be in the story. So like, oh, I really don't want this main character's best friend to be a love interest. Or I, I really don't want this person to have a bad family situation, you know. Stuff like that that you can write down, which is really helpful for later in the publishing process when you're with your betas and they have some suggestions. If they suggest something that you know that you personally did not want in your story, you can go ahead and ignore those suggestions or alter them or whichever you see fit for your novel. So we have come up with an idea. (laughs) We have come up with kind of a little what we want in the story, what we don't want in the story, and now here's the part where I make my guide to write the rest of the story. Personally for me, if I have a good guide, I, it makes writing so much easier and quicker because I kind of know what I have to like check off. But um, I usually don't write a guide until I've gotten maybe like five chapters in or so, just so I can kind of see where the story feels like it's taking me. Because sometimes you'll start an idea and you like it and then you write two or three chapters and be like, mm, this isn't really for me or like this isn't as interesting to write as I thought it would be. And if I have learned anything, is that forcing yourself to write something that you don't want to write that is creative, I'm not talking about like school essays or whatever, really pulls and drains on your creative, your creativity. I had to uh, finish a story for Tumblr and Patreon, but it was really like, I had stopped liking the story long ago because I felt like I kind of lost the direction that I wanted it to go and it was it didn't end up being what I imagined it to be and I just realized I didn't like having that many main characters and all these other things that made writing these chapters really draining for me but thankfully that's over now so I don't have to touch that story anymore but always make sure what you're writing is something that you are interested in because otherwise it will be a pain in the butt to write and an even bigger pain in the butt to edit so I'll write maybe five chapters. I'm someone who writes really short chapters because I like writing a whole chapter in one sitting pretty much. So um, pre-editing, a lot of my chapters end up being like 1,200 to 2,000 words long, which I know is really short for some people, but that's just how I write personally in short, like small bursts. Um, So yeah, I'll have my five chapters and then if I'm like, oh, I really like this, this is where 
my little handy dandy notebook comes in hand. So I got this notebook as a present and I really like how, let me lean back, how large it is. Like, you can see. And the pages, let me flip to a blank one, are, um, have lots and lots of lines in them. So there's lots of space to jot down ideas and stuff. And I have all of my like plot ideas in this book. So let me tell you um, what I mean. Like I've done, okay, ignore most of this because I'm still deciding if I want to ever write this, but this is a character map I did for a story I was thinking about writing and I had written like pages. Okay, I'll just show you. <laughs> I've written, sorry, Ooh, pages upon pages of character maps for this particular story and they're all all the way down to the bottom so it's just a really good um, format for me to keep everything in but when it comes down to plot and planning if I'm taking notes when I rewrite stuff so the very first no, the second full-length book I ever wrote which um, was called I'll never forgive you it was another yandere story because I really like yandere stuff. So. Um, but I was, I'm planning on rewriting that and releasing that sometime. I don't know if it's gonna be after Laconic, but before the next book in that series, or I'll figure it out. But I'm rereading it and taking notes on what I wanna change. And then we get to, oops, I left some blank pages. All right, here we go. This is for Intro Laconic. So I wrote this in pencil, unfortunately, this time, but it is like huge. All of this stuff I have planned. Like I have um, just general notes. Like I wanted to change some of the characters' names. So I made sure to write that down, like I was saying before, things you wanna make sure you want to do. Um, and then description of specific rooms. Like Venus is the main character of Intro Laconic. And I wrote down like, oh, her bedroom has a blue silk comforter. Uh, she has marble bathroom fixtures. She has a black chandelier and her window is on the left side of her room. Stuff that is helpful for consistency. And um, keeping down people's ages because apparently I'm really bad at remembering how old people are, especially in relation to other people. So like Noah is 20 years old in this and tan is 18 and you know just making sure i write that down and have an idea of when their birthdays are and stuff because you don't want to accidentally say oh my character's birthday is in june and then your story take place in june and nobody ever talk about their birthday that's a little odd unless it's a specific plot point you're doing um and then writing down physical features like are their are their faces softer or more angular do they have larger eyes or smaller eyes how do they like to wear wear their eyebrows i guess that's the right way to say it how do they do their hair what colors is their hair um and then after i did all of that i also have um like plot points so these are all things i wanted the, the characters to go and experience i'm not going to tell you what they are to spoil the book but just have i just take lots and lots of notes to help with consistency and things but i will give you a look at mythomania's um i'll just read some of the plot points that i had written down just so you know kind of specifically what i'm talking about with how i like to do it let me see hold up i have to do a lot of flipping all right so i also did mythos outline in pencil so I went outside and I just was listening to some music, feeling relaxed and writing down whatever came to me. So um, I will read some of these. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you want to take another look, um, it's kind of really light, but they're each bullet points. So I don't write like paragraphs or anything and I don't like writing every single thing that happens in a story because I'll get bored with it. But for example, Isla discovers her apparent relationship with her bias. Okay, she's really confused and tries to ignore everything. She's forced to fly to Korea and deal with Smash Entertainment's lawyer team. So that's like the first, how many chapters of Mytho? Let me see. So those just three, one, two, yeah, those three bullet points I have ended up being, um, let's see. 
the first two whole chapters of this book. So three sentences turned out to be the first three, sorry, the first two chapters of this book. So obviously I had lots of room to play around with details. Some people like to be like, Isla wakes up at 6 a.m. She goes and gets coffee. She puts on her house slippers, you know, and basically write every single thing that they want to happen in the chapter. And if that works best for you, more power to you. But that would drive me insane because even as I write, sometimes new ideas will pop up in my head and I always don't stick to the outline completely. Sometimes I'll have an idea of like, this will work better. Or what if this happened instead of this? So to me, an outline is just a general guide to help you keep motivated, to have an idea where the story is going and what you want to achieve with it. But it's not something you have to stick to super firmly. So just those three really short, vague sentences ended up helping me write this story. So there's, um, sometimes I do go into a little more detail if there are many important things happening in one chapter but like for the first two chapters those are basically the big hit big hit <laughs> the big hitting things so um yes it's basically just a summary for me a really short kind of sloppily put together summary with a whole bunch of notes put to the side and that has helped me immensely when writing so i hope this was helpful to you guys um another thing i do do um outlining and plotting better on paper because I can scribble you know stuff down faster than I can type but I do know there are software programs for people to keep everything organized if they prefer to do that instead so um I'll leave a few of those resources down below I think there's one called campfire and some other stuff but I've never used any of them personally so I'm not endorsing or you know saying they're bad or anything but Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you. So yes, good luck writing whatever you are writing. <laughs> and make sure to follow me on all of my socials, which will be also down below. And I'll see you guys next week for a new video. Bye-bye.